Sawadee Krap, welcome to Phuket Extra on this Wednesday, May 9th. I'm JP Mistanza with the news you need to know. Police in the north of the island are confirming with the Phuket News that they do not test drivers involved in serious accidents for alcohol or other substances as standard procedure. The news comes as Tachat Chai police near the island's checkpoint confirmed that the 24-year-old female driver whose pickup truck flew across the median strip and slammed head-on into a tour bus on Sunday, she was not in fact charged for drunk driving since she was not tested at the scene despite officers reporting that her behavior indicated she was drunk. Still, a captain at the Tachat Chai police disputed that she didn't seem drunk at the scene, saying he does not know why the report said that, and added that the woman had dozed off when the crash happened and she's been charged with reckless driving. No serious injuries were reported in that instance. Could a new separate village be established to help reintegrate former insurgents in the deep south of Thailand? Well, a committee is now set to study that plan after hundreds of locals voiced their opposition for the proposal. The plan is part of the Bring People Home project aimed at reintegrating former insurgents and those sympathetic to their cause back into Thai society. And army officials say that these people are mostly made up of former insurgents who fled the country about 30 years ago, many of whom are well into their 70s now. Last week, over 500 local residents in several villages that would neighbor the new village, well, they voiced their discontent at the idea in a meeting, and now army commanders in the south are setting up a committee to further study the plan, which would include occupational training and employment in addition to setting up a new village. A report of a foreign man missing in the waters at Lyon Beach yesterday is highlighting the critical need for trained lifeguards to patrol Phuket's beaches. A local living at a nearby housing estate reported seeing a man hit by a strong wave and then he failed to resurface from the water at Lyon Beach yesterday afternoon at about 3.30 p.m. telling a nearby rescue team stationed at the beach, but the search was called off hours later as darkness fell. The search resumed this morning, but an official from the Cheng Tele Disaster Office says that they believe the man may have returned to the beach later, though they will keep searching until they receive a report that he's safe. Meanwhile, the head of the disaster office in Cheng Tele told the Phuket News that his rescue team have grave concerns for beach safety along Lyon and Leipang beaches, which have no lifeguards or duty in most areas, and their rescue teams don't have the required skills to deal with the strong surf, especially during the monsoon season. For more, visit thepuketnews.com. Phuket Extra will be right back, so sit tight. Premier SSI Diamond Dive Centre. Visit us in Geelong or on c-bees.com. CB's Diving. Adventure in good hands. Welcome back to Phuket Extra. So one year after the brutal murder of a karaoke bar girl who was cut in half and dumped in the jungle in Konken province, the provincial court is set to pass their judgment tomorrow, seven weeks ahead of schedule. The body of 22-year-old Wadisara Klinjui was found dismembered on May 26 last year in a shallow grave and within weeks, five people were arrested in connection with her death, three of whom had fled to Myanmar but were sent back to Thailand. There are five defendants in this case, which made headlines last year, four of whom faced charges of premeditated murder, which carries a maximum punishment of the death penalty, although the case has centered around 25-year-old Priya Nuch Nongwachai, the alleged mastermind behind her death. Priya Nuch is said to have wanted to, quote, give Warisara a lesson after learning that the victim had allegedly given information to police that led to the arrests of Priya Nuch's husband on drug charges. The judgment was originally scheduled for June 29th, but it's been bumped up for this week. We'll have that report once it's available. 463 million baht, that's how much the anti-money laundering office, AMLO, is saying they want in assets they want frozen from all 11 people linked with the Bangkok Victoria's Secret Massage Parlor's alleged human trafficking ring. The owner of the parlor, which was raided back in January, 
He's included in the list of people wanted in connection with the alleged human trafficking side of the story, although he and his wife are still on the run. It all stems from the raid of the Bangkok-based parlor back in January, where authorities found about 80 women from the ASEAN region, many of whom were between 14 and 18 years old, believed to have been forced into the sex trade, and investigators also found a ledger that implicated kickbacks were given to state officials in a form of, quote, entertainment, all to ensure the place would stay open. And that's it for Puket Extra today. From all of us here at the Puket News Center, thank you for watching. Until tomorrow, stay classy, Phuket.